This video is about my dog, Bambi, and I'm going to tell you the truth. It's a bit of a warning, too, but before you think I'm a jerk, just listen to the whole story. The hardest part of my van life is having a dog. This is my dog, Bambi. She is the sweetest, most wonderful girl, and I love her very much. In this video, I'm going to tell you how I found her, what's up with her leg, and what makes it so difficult to have this particular dog in a van. We'll also open some subscriber gifts sent to Bambi. So Bambi's a pretty intense dog, super high energy. She's a Belgian Malinois mix. And I'll talk more about that in a bit. But I didn't know any of that when I picked up this scrawny little dog on the side of the road in Tennessee. So I was on this cross country trip moving back to California after decades away. I was in a 93 Chevy G20 van and my beautiful dog Paime had passed suddenly five months earlier so we were going to take this trip together and now I was doing it alone so when I found Bambi in Tennessee it was pretty magical uh, because I was without a dog but on the other hand I wasn't expecting to get a dog so soon and I wasn't quite prepared and it all happened so fast so I was driving down Highway 40 in Tennessee going about 60 miles an hour when two dogs ran across the highway. I had to veer really fast to the left and then I veered over and pulled over real quick. Um, I did not hit them. I pulled over and was catching my breath and I went and sat by my side van door and looked over and the black dog ran off and the other little dog stayed there just sort of darting back and forth looking in my direction and I was like am I gonna rescue a dog today oh my god so I did have a leash and treats um, and I got some water and I took off from the van and ran over to where she was at there was another lady parked nearby as well and uh, when I came over there Bambi just came right towards me and I said come here girl and it felt really special like I was saying come here girl I've, I've found you you're gonna be okay now and I think she really needed help. That's why she didn't run off. She was like, I'm over it. She was super skinny. She obviously had been hit by a car. Her leg was held up. She had been limping, you know. Um, she was covered in ticks. There were little scars on her, but the scars looked like they had healed quite a while ago. And she had teats hanging down and it looked like she had weaned some pups at some point. So she was a wreck. Um, basically, I leashed her up and put her in the shade, and then I was like, what am I doing? Am I going to rescue this dog today? Should I bring her to the shelter? Um, basically, we ended up going to the shelter that day, and that's when I learned she was a Belgian Malinois mix. This is a high-energy shepherd, similar to a German shepherd, but different. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, I got her shots that day, and... Uh, asked about her leg. The lady said it was all in her head, but obviously she had sustained an injury and the leg she had held up was much smaller than the her good leg that she was using was much larger. So she had obviously had it held up for a while and in addition to whatever injury she had, the bone had healed wrong because it doesn't bend right at the elbow or at the wrist. And there's not really much I can do about that and it doesn't hold her back. So we don't intend to go to the vet and haven't rebroken or anything crazy like that. But so we get along and that's what's up with her arm. <laughs> but that day, basically I spent all day running around looking for possible puppies, knocking on the doors of local farmers. Anybody know this dog? I went to the local gas station and asked everybody there, did anybody know the dog? And we actually took off twice. I drove about a half hour west and ended up coming back all the way to look more for puppies and knock on more doors. I just didn't know what to do. And finally, I had to make a decision. It was sunset and I decided to keep her. And we took off and headed west into the sunset, literally. And that's when a police officer pulled us over and searched the entire van. <laughs> so that's how I found Bambi and decided to keep her. And for the next couple of weeks, we ran around in Colorado and got to know each other. 
Bambi is a Belgian Malinois mix, again, similar to a German Shepherd. But these are the types of dogs that work with Border Patrol, the military, and the police. These are shepherds that were bred to have a job. They're super, super intense. They call them bitey mouths because they really um, use their mouth to latch onto things. Um, they're also called maligators, as in alligator, Belgian Malinois, maligator. Yeah, so these are really super intense dogs. They're not really like family dogs. They're not the type of dog you'd take on a nice walk once a day. Um, as you saw from our walk, we do a walk, an intense run walk, at least once a day, sometimes twice. And if not, she still gets out multiple times because that's what she needs. But she's a super intense dog, and these dogs do tend to be aggressive. And Bambi can be aggressive with other dogs. Sometimes I have to leave her in the van. Uh, she was trying to get in this guy's school bus. She was eating the other dog's food, creating a fight. And then she started barking, which she usually doesn't do. And, you know, a lot of times we can't just go outside and just chill and relax or hang out with others. She's jumping on people. You know, I got to worry about if there's another dog coming around. Bambi, stop. It is very limiting. And I feel bad about leaving her in the van, but... I was trying to get this footage of this guy, I and mean, it didn't work out. And that's often the case. Bambi, no. Bambi can play with some dogs. Yeah. Yeah. That happened to me for a, a long time. Now I've been in a van six years. <laughs> I can't stand living with other people. Most people would probably look at this clip and go, wow, that's really intense play. And it is. So here Bambi's playing with another full-blooded Belgian Malinois, an unfixed male. And they're going at it. And I love this. This is great because that other dog can handle, you know, and hold their own with Bambi, who is a dominant dog, even with another Belgian Malinois. A lot of people ask me, is your dog friendly? And it's kind of like, depends. What's your dog like? Is your dog a tiny little yappy dog? Is your dog really insecure? Because Bambi will definitely try and dominate your dog. And then it, and she's just so in, intense in her general approach with other dogs. If you ever see it, you'll be like, whoa. And that's what the other dog says, whoa. So, you know, she can play with Belgies. She can play with Huskies. Um, and other big dogs. So there's a dog park right next to this field here. And lately I've been training her to put on her, a muzzle and be able to go into the dog park. So the muzzle means you can go in the dog park. And that way I don't have to worry about her, you know, accidentally <laughs> biting someone. She's starting to do the Belgie thing where she latches onto the neck and that's what they do. Uh, so even with another Belgie, I have to be careful and only give her about 20, 25 minutes with that dog. But... Uh, they are definitely playing this normal play. And uh, this is us in the end trying to break them up. Uh, and they steal. Oh, oh, look at the kisses. So good. So now I don't have to take her on a second giant walk, you know. And it's exhausting. <laughs> There's a couple of other things about Bambi that make it <laughs> kind of hard. Um, right there she's seen a dog. The other thing is she's super friendly with people. Super friendly. So friendly that she'll yank herself out of my, her leash out of my can and go running towards complete strangers to say hello to them. Oftentimes strange men that I don't want to say hello to. <laughs> so it's kind of, I have to be really careful she doesn't jump on them. But, oh. See what I mean? Don't jump. <laughs> exactly. Well, you're happy now and you look beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so this is what I have to do is tie Bambi up to a pole in order to do this video for you. I'm in Petaluma in the warehouse district, which is absolutely amazing. And then I just came upon this. Let's give you an idea of scale here. God, that back one is beautiful. It makes me want to dance right now. So I just tied up Bambi outside of this place because I really just wanted to explore it and 
we'd just been through this intense thing where we went by all these shops and she was trying to pull into each and every one and, you know, trying to jump up on people. And it's just absolutely intense and exhausting. Um, look at this amazing sculpture. She probably would have jumped up on that sculpture. But anyway, I just wanted to enjoy this, end up talking with this guy, and it wouldn't have been possible if she was there. And you'll see in the end, we still had trouble. Yeah. Uh, we are. And he was a printing man. Yeah. Pantograph does is it takes a point in space on that white face on the right and mm -hmm. multiplies it due to the right. difference in length on the bar to another point in space there. Right, because the relationship between each dot is the same and that's how you can extrapolate it up or down. How the Romans did statue. Right. Oh no no. Unfortunately, she lunged at another dog and pulled the whole mailbox down. So one of the ways I've been training Bambi is with treats, and it's been very helpful because she's extremely food motivated. It's kind of an issue. I have to really watch her on our walks. She has gotten things before which have caused diarrhea in the middle of the night in a van, having to let her out on the side of the road. Um... And she's eaten things before that. Had I not gotten them out of her mouth, I believe they would have choked her. Here, I didn't quite know what she was doing. But it's obvious <laughs> she's trying to eat the berries, even. So I, once I realized she liked them, I, I started picking them for her. And now I just feed them to her. So she doesn't have to bite them. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Good dog, Bambi. Don't worry, she's not going to eat my feet here. Uh... Everyone knows having a dog in a van is going to be dirtier than it otherwise would be. And it is. Just think every time the dog's outside bringing the stuff in, all of the blankets and bedding and harness and everything, doing all the laundry. But Bambi has three coats of fur. And I thought when I found her, I was like, yeah, short-haired dog after having a chow mix. But she is way furrier than my chow mix even was. And it gets literally in everything in the van. Uh, for me, being a clean freak, it is literally one of the hardest, hardest parts. I sweep out the van once fully every day, sometimes twice, just to keep up on it. And I brush her every day. Okay, now this is genius for van life. See what I did there? Putting Bambi's muzzle right in the front of the van, indicating it's not, this is a dog that needs a muzzle and it's not even on her right now. Maybe I'm not going to go towards that van. Maybe I'm not going to try and get in that van. With everything I've said, you might be wondering, well, why do you have a dog in a van then if it's so hard? Well, Besides the fact that it just sort of the universe brought her to me and the fact that I love her very much, she provides security for me in a big way. I would be too afraid to park in many of the places that I park and many of the places that I hike without her. The real reason I have Bambi is because I love her. She's actually not a bad dog. She's a really good dog. Super smart learning new things all the time, always wanting to do the right thing. And it's pretty amazing having a powerful dog like this. But I will say it's a very serious consideration if you're thinking about having a big dog in a van. The amount of time and energy it takes, just that alone, really limits what else you can do in your life, especially since you're in a van. Um, and that's limiting. So if you don't have the energy or you don't have the, the time... I would suggest not having a big dog in a van. It takes a lot of work. It's been so difficult that I've often considered, you know, I, I either need to let the van go or the dog because this isn't working. But I haven't wanted to let either go. And even though it's still, quote unquote, not really working, it's a challenge on an ongoing basis. But we keep moving forward. And I love my dog very much. And I wouldn't give her up for anything. Speaking of Bambi, we have received a gift in the mail. I'm pretty sure this is treats for Bambi. So I'm just going to go ahead and put Bambi's name right here. 
to Bambi. Hey, Bambi, I think you got some treats here. You want to come join in in the video? Thank you so much for sending us a gift. We really appreciate it. Oh, my God. <laughs> you are not going to believe this, Bambi. What is this? A new toy for Bambi. You've been needing a new toy, haven't you? Oh, it's got a little fluffy end there. Oh, ow. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Oh, she just loves it already. Good girl, Bambi. Oh, we actually use these kinds. That's perfect. Oh, we got some gravy trains. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Look at that big bone. Oh, wow. This is a nice big bone for Bambi. Wow, what is this? A, chew, a, a pool toy. What's this one? <laughs> Let me get the tag off him. <laughs> Can you see this? Good girl. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, and there's a sweet note too. Hi, Bambi. I hope you enjoy these goodies. I love your channel. Paula in Connecticut. Thank you so much for sending us that gift. That was great. It's been about three minutes and uh, she already got through that. Let's <laughs> <laughs> try and rescue a, a little dog off the side of the highway and look what happens. Big giant dog. I don't know why the film's all red. Ow. Look at how big she is. <laughs> huh? Huh? Yeah. 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 I just tried and rescued one little dog. And look what happened. Look what happened. She was this teeny little, teeny little dog. <laughs> she wasn't a puppy. She was just a skinny rescue. She was a skinny rescue. <laughs> Get it, Bambi. Oh. Got some footage of you for your fans. Everybody loves you, Bambi. Beast. Get over here, beast. <laughs> she loves her new toy. <laughs> she usually, like, she'll tear something up pretty good, and then whatever's left will last, like, a long time. So she'll probably have this a long time. Love you, Bambi. Love you, Bambi. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Bambi. Hehehehe. <laughs>